Good afternoon. Welcome to our faith community of Sacred Heart on the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Josh Boss. Jesus is the great high priest who offers himself for our sins to reconcile us to the Father. He took to himself our humanity and all our suffering and sorrow. Therefore, let us gladly offer ourselves to him, approach this altar with confidence in his love and mercy, and receive with gratitude the spiritual food that makes us whole. This afternoon, we welcome a, part, a new member to our faith community. We celebrate today with Louise and Maria and their family and friends as their child, Amelia Sofia Marquez Rosas, is baptized in the Catholic faith. The scripture readings are in the hymnal under 1177, and you can find the hymn numbers and some parts of the Mass on the hymn board. If you have a cell phone, we ask that you put it on silent at this time. We have been asked at this Mass to pray for the eternal peace of Maria and David Santos. We invite you to stand and remain standing to greet those around you in a safe manner. Please join us in singing the opening hymn, number 832, In Christ There Is No East or West. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh, splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Jesus replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. mentioned in the introduction, we welcome Luis and Maria who present their infant daughter Camilla for baptism and along with them godparents and family members and friends. So let's extend a warm sacred heart welcome to our guests. I want to also welcome many of you who are visiting the Columbia area today, maybe for the game, to be with family and friends. You have our prayers if you're returning tonight uh, or even tomorrow that God's holy angels will watch over you and keep you safe on your journey. So I want to take you back into history, to a time in England's history during the Civil War. And there was a general and a statesman named Oliver Cromwell, and he led the armies of Parliament against the sitting king at that time, Charles I. And he succeeded and defeated Charles's army and became the protector of the realm in place of the king. And so, in order to make it sort of official, he had to sit for a portrait. And so the artist seeing that Oliver Cromwell had uh, a lot of warts on his face, decided to present him in a much more, uh, let's say, uh, nice appearance, okay? And uh, so he painted Oliver Cromwell with a beautiful complexion, all right, as the protector of England's realm. Well, when uh, it was all done and it was presented to, the, to Cromwell, he got very upset. He said, throw that thing out. That's not me. I want you to paint me with warts and all. And that's where we get the expression sometimes it's used, warts and all, in, uh, in our own situation or in others, when we have to admit that we have faults that we don't um, always present ourselves very well, um, or we're, we're not known for always making the best presentation, warts and all. And I want to suggest that we should visit James and John tonight with all their warts, okay? Let's hear again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said, Teacher, 
We want you to do for us whatever you ask, of, whatever we ask of you. Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. That's why the other twelve got upset, because they had witnessed on other occasions that Jesus had taken James and John along with Peter aside, and um, they were sort of they were sort of had special treatment. Now they want to sit on the right and the left when he comes into his glory. Thinking, of course, of his earthly glory, eventually restoring Israel to its former glory as a nation, state, and replacing the Romans who occupied Palestine at that time. So, what do we see here? We see ambition and uh, its worst appearance in all its wars. Now, when we think about ambition, it has two sides. It has a good side and a bad side. There are probably employers here who would wish some of their employees had more ambition. Okay? That's the good side. In other words, they work a little harder. They may maybe take more initiative in their work or their, around their place of employment. It could also be said of sometimes moms and dads who wish maybe a son or a daughter would take a little bit more uh, initiative or have ambition. The same can be for teachers or coaches, etc. So there is that good side. In other words, to work harder or to look for areas where improvements can be made and to exercise the initiative to do so, to make it so. But then also there's the ambition that we see in James and John, and that is very self-serving. And sometimes we are plagued with that, or sometimes we are guilty of that ourselves. Because that kind of ambition oftentimes um, tramples over other people. To whether get to the top, or to get a promotion, or to get a better job, or to, be, uh, to get a better position on the team, or sometimes even just to look good in the sight of others. The ambition that it can basically um, not care about others and only serve our, our personal interests. And Jesus challenged James and John to be careful about this type of vice. But he also presented a virtue that can be used to counterfeit. And the virtue is basically serve. To be of service to others. In other words, to put other people's needs ahead of our own. And uh, is it one way to counter that negative ambition that sometimes we're guilty of? And Jesus makes it very clear that that's how he sees, or heaven sees, and especially God sees, the greatness of the human person. In fact, to be a servant of others, Jesus even translated, uses the, the expression slave of others, is what makes a person great in the sight of God. And let's face it, that's very real. That's very true. Again, let's visit the, the employer among us who sees an employee, employee who takes initiative to be of service to fellow employees or to customers. And oftentimes they're rewarded, maybe through a promotion, maybe through a salary increase, or at least through some recognition. And the same goes, I'm sure, at least with my parents of eight children, oftentimes we were rewarded for taking initiative to help out our siblings, especially our younger siblings, but even sometimes to care about our older siblings. Within family life, to make it better, more positive, to be of service to my brothers and my sisters. And the same, I imagine, can easily be the case with your household. So when we struggle with this negative side of ambition, the vice, and identify it easily as self-serving, make ourselves look better, or to be rewarded more. 
Let's counter it with the virtue of servitude. To be of service to others. Whether it be people we know, people we work with, or even just total strangers. Now I take this moment to call to, uh, forward the family of Camilla for the waters of Bath. Luis and Maria, you have asked to have your child, Camilla, baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training her in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring Camilla up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor. And Godparents, you are here to support Luis and Maria in their duty as Christian parents. And so this Christian community welcomes you with great joy. And in his name, Camilla, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. And I invite you to make the sign of the cross on her forehead. And the And so, Sacred Heart parishioners and guests, I invite you to please stand now. You take this moment to present these special petitions to our Heavenly Father. Please respond. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Through baptism and confirmation, may Camilla, your faithful follower and a witness to your gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Lead her by a holy life joys of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Make the lives of her parents and godparents examples of faith to inspire her always, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Keep her family always in your love, and renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. And we also pause for a moment to lift up for our Heavenly Father, those on our parish prayer lines, and others who have approached us privately asking for prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. We pray for our members, our men and women serving in the military, especially those who are deployed overseas, far away from family and loved ones, for their safety and protection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Good and loving God, Father of all, hear our prayers that we lift up to you. The intercession of Jesus, your Son, present with us in this celebration of Holy Eucharist, and as well as now in risen glory with you forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I'm going to pray a special blessing over the water that will be used to baptize Camilla. And I ask you to listen to it carefully. It calls to mind stories in the Bible where water played a very significant role in God's plan of salvation. Stories about which we are very familiar. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs, which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood and a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led ancient Israel out of slavery in Egypt to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. 
the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Jesus willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your Son. You created man in your own image and likeness. Cleanse him from sin in a new birth, but to innocent by water and the Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Parents and godparents, you have come here to present Camilla for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, she is to receive the gift of new life from God with love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring Camilla up to the practice of faith. See that the divine life which God gives her is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in her heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism, reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which Camilla is about to be baptized. And so I ask you to respond, I do, to the following six questions. All of us can renew our baptismal promises along with them. And so I ask all of us, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works. I do. And all his empty promises. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which Camilla is about to be baptized. So I ask you to lead her over the water. Please. Camilla, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give her a big hand. God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you, Camilla, from sin, giving you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and has welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the prism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you, Camilla, live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. In ancient times, it's recorded in the scriptures, the God who chose a man or a woman to be a king or a queen or a prophet, and always have them anointed with perfumed oil, who do the very same thing now thousands of years later in baptism, with chrism, oil blessed by our bishop. And as the Godfather lights the candle, from the Christ candle, Jesus is the light of the world. And the light of faith is passed on from parents to children. Luis and Maria, Camilla has become a new creation and has clothed herself in Christ. We ask you that as she is enlightened by Christ, she will always walk as a child of the light. May she keep the flame of faith alive in her heart. When the Lord comes, may she go out to meet Jesus with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Camilla, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained to the everlasting life of heaven. 
I present to you the newest member of Sacred Heart Parish. More Brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the mighty Father. May the Lord. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, Jesus stretched out his hands as he endured his passion on the cross, so as to break the bonds of death, 
to manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory now as with one voice we acclaim. Lord, 
we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you, but not in our sins, but in the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. Amen. In a safe manner, we share the Lord's peace with all those around us, especially with the many visitors we have with us this evening.
Gebäude.
our annual Catholic Steward Appeal begins in our parish this weekend. As noted in the bulletin, all registered households will receive an invitation and information from, from Bishop McKnight regarding this year's CSA. This campaign funds vital services to all the parishes and schools of the diocese and to those in need in the larger community. It is time to gather up those loose coins scattered about your home and put them to good use. There will be a coin harvest this weekend and next weekend. Please place your coins in the marked containers in the back of church. The proceeds will go to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Next weekend, we'll be collecting non-perishable food donations for the Food Bank of Central and Northeast Missouri. If you would like to make a monetary donation, place it in an envelope marked Food Bank and drop it in the collection basket. Food donations are accepted monthly at Sacred Heart on the fourth Sunday of each month. For more information on donating and on the food bank, you can visit their website at sharefoodbrainhope.org. And lastly, the Knights of Columbus is, has a couple of uh, fundraisers this weekend. Uh, the proceeds of these are going to go to Cardinal Glennon Hospital in St. Louis for the Special Olympics, Coyote Hill, and Belmore Cobble. Uh, after Mass tonight, they are going to be uh, having a Tootsie Roll drive. Uh, and then tomorrow after Mass, uh, at the 8.30 Mass, they are going to also be having a pancake breakfast. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and as well prepared for the gifts that are eternal in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The pancake, sausage, egg, breakfast uh, hosted by the Knights of Columbus begins at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So if you come around 8 o'clock, you'll beat the, uh, the post-8.30 mass rush. Just so you know. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our celebration has come to a close. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.